Because I always go around telling people that man's greatest enemy is man today. And it's nice to know there are human beings in this world who really mean Paropakarartam idam shariram. You're all varied professionals belonging to several organizations, doing so many good things and doing very well. It's not because you're not doing well that you left that, but you voluntarily left that for the greatest calling on this planet by God on mankind. Do something for others. And that is, that is what gives me so much happiness that words don't come out at all. But let me start off. Prabodh and all his gang, I would call them, of do-gooders. Let me at the outset thank you all for allowing me to come and meet with all of you. Because this, you know, this, this is such a nice feeling that you forget the whole world worries when you see good people doing good work. Friends, people say he has done this, he has done that. Don't believe them. I now almost feel like echoing what one of those great people of Germany, of yore, von Johanna Goethe said one day. He said, I now know philosophy, physiology, jurisprudence, and even a last theology. How much? From end to end with labor scheme. But here I stand, O oh fool, with all my lore, no wiser than before. Friends, man must try to be wiser. When I look at the psychiatrist, I like him. Because most psychiatrists hate me. They would like to see me, see the end of me. Because I am dead against psychotic drugs. Because each one of them derived from either rocket fuel extract or from naphtha extract of nujol damage the human system. It's not only the psychiatric drugs, other drugs also. Because there's a beautiful study done by an American scientist, a great scientist. He is actually a professor of genetics in the Washington State University. Douglas, he's called Douglas, D.C. Douglas. Douglas did a fantastic study. He created a chip called the MIT chip, mitochondrial chip, a computer chip, which tracks the drug when it goes into the human system. And it tells you where, what it does. And he took a lot of our modern medicine, we call it as modern medicine. Why is it called modern medicine? I don't know. Anyway, we call it as modern medicine. And the other herbal drugs, mainly Tibetan, Chinese and Indian herbal drugs. And what came out in that study is something fascinating. The minute we give any drug, when I give any drug, it may be anything from aspirin to statin, it, the body says, this is something new, I have not seen it. You know, my ancestors have not seen it. Mankind has not seen it. So it must be a poison. That's the wisdom of the human body. So any poison which goes in, the body tries to throw into the chemistry, chemistry factory in the body called the liver. So it's thrown into the liver. Every drug, mind you, mark my words, every drug. Now what the liver does, it does its best to destroy it. Does its best to destroy it. Supposing the liver is not able to immediately destroy the whole lot, something comes out of the liver. Which we teach pharmacology students as first pass effect. I used to ask a lot of professors of pharmacology when I go around to medical colleges to lecture, what did you teach about the first pass effect? Very simple. Sir, it is the amount of drug that comes out of the liver after the circulation in the liver. But what is it about, what is the philosophy behind it? Would you believe not one person ever answered that question? The answer should have been, or the student must have been told, Try to prescribe as less drugs as possible, as less drugs as possible because every single drug, when it becomes a chemical, is not recognized by the human system as its own. This is the beauty. I will give you an example. There are 43 studies on garlic in the world literature. 43 studies on garlic. And the conclusion is, garlic is good for cooking but not as a medicine. Now, there was an editor in the British Medical Journal and the editor was a good friend of mine, so I told him, I phoned him and said, I am going to write a letter to you. Richard, 
you have done one mistake. You have not seen what did they use in garlic studies. What they used was a garlic pill. Now what is garlic pill vis a -vis garlic? Anything that we give, we want it to be either nice to the body to, for taste or you know some obnoxious things you don't want. So West, there have a lot of people who abhor the very smell of garlic. So to sell drugs, what did they do? They removed the smelling part of garlic, which is called the SH group, the sulfhydryl group. The same chemical that gives good smell for your fart. The same thing. So they removed that. I'm sorry for using unparliamentary words, but you know, uh, you want to tell the truth, you have to really drive the point home. So this garlic pill is garlic minus SH group inside a plastic capsule which goes into the gut and there it delivers it. It's supposed to deliver it. By and large, most of the time, the garlic is eaten by the, our friends in the, in the toilet, whom you see on the television. See when that, uh, what is that thing called, you spray it, and that they all come like that. And then suddenly you get that spray and then say, they all die. What's that spray called? I forget it. Harpic Excel. <laughs> you go, go back home and see. There are, there are billions and billion, trillions of germs in the, in the toilet. So they are very happy because they get good garlic to eat. What happens to you? Nothing happens to you. Now garlic to be effective in the human system, it must be eaten as garlic in nature. And that too in raw form. And that too put in the mouth, chewed kept there for a minute or two when it burns you because garlic is a medicine called alanine but it is in the form of alicine in the garlic and it mixes with the trypsine in the saliva to become alanine unless it that it's no effect now when we did that study garlic is a fantastic medicine fantastic medicine from killing germs viruses lowering your whatever you call you know you, people have an idea that cholesterol is bad etc etc if you think it is bad it will lower it if it is good for you it will increase it actually now we know that old elderly ladies you know old elderly in english means above 85 old elderly ladies who are still alive and healthy in the french nursing homes have on an average a cholesterol of 500 milligrams per cent to 900 milligrams per cent because in your body you have how many cells do you have in the body? School going kids? 53 trillion. Good. It is not bad. <laughs> anyway, 50 to 100 trillion cells. That is 10 to the power 14. And that, those cells die in billions every day because they have their time to die. They are told that is called apoptosis. Apoptosis in Greek means falling of a brown leaf. This word was coined by a botanist called Martin Raff, who was a professor of botany in the University College in London in the early part of the last century. And Martin gave the name apoptosis. That is a cell, when it's told, there's a, there's a gene called the suicidal gene. Gene tells the cell, like for example a red cell, 120 days is life, an RBC. At the end of the 120 days, it gets a message saying that, look Mr. RBC, your time is up. So the RBC responds, the cell is intact. Apoptosis is intact cell, becomes smaller, 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 smaller and becomes amorphic, loses its structure, form and at that time it becomes a speck of dust and we have lot of scavengers and they are so efficient inside, they don't require even that machine to brew, they come eat it up, phagocytes, phagophage is appetite, they have got so much of appetite for cells, any cell that is dying they eat it up, so you are fine. But now what happens? You make the surrounding of the cell so bad that the cell instead of dying apoptosis dies by necrosis. Necrosis is cell wall breaks. And when this necrosis occurs, the cell content comes out which is very bad for the outside and the outside gets destroyed. And this is one of the reasons why you get cancer etc.